Welcome to Tokyo Tuesday. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. Today we are talking about staying connected while traveling. And since we're in Japan, we might as well add a bit of a Japan touch to it. But in order to do this video properly, I'm gonna need a few props, so. All right, first things first. Whew. Much better. So let's take a second and talk about staying connected while traveling. This is a topic that I have really mixed feelings on. I'll link a video here where I talk about it and a podcast below. But obviously you can't overstate the importance of being able to stay connected while traveling. And so you want to make sure that you know your options and you don't want to spend all of your cash just so that you can stay connected. Now there are a wild number of options out there. When I first came to Japan in like 2005, there were next to no options for staying connected. Like little portable Wi-Fi routers weren't a thing, sim rental wasn't a thing, and you did not want to use data roaming. You still don't want to use data roaming because it's going to cost you. And now there is an abundance of options for how to stay connected while traveling, almost to the point where there's too many. So it can be difficult to make the choice. You know what? Let me just put the lens cap. All right, so let's take a second and draw out a few of these options. Just make them really, let's talk about what the options are that you have. Option number one, renting a phone. I don't even know if this is still an option. To be honest, I haven't done anything like this since back in, I'd say 2007. Option number two renting a sim and putting it in your existing phone. This is what my little brother did when he came to visit Japan. Option number three. There are apps that will allow you to connect to a whole bunch of Wi-Fi in the country. For example, this one's for Japan. All I had to do is put in my email. This option here gives us a map that shows us all the local Wi-Fi connections near where we are. You can zoom right into the map you can check out the Wi-Fi connection and you see what it is. This here also gives you the option to download the map offline. And that brings us to option number four, which is some kind of Wi-Fi rental. In the past, I wasn't a huge fan of the Wi-Fi option because these were used to be incredibly expensive, rental prices were through the roof, and it just, it really, really wasn't worth it. So let's take a look at these here. I'm actually gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this option because I don't even know if it's still an option. It's something that I haven't even thought about doing since maybe 2007. Option number two, sim rental. There are a lot of good options out there for sim rental. In fact, in Japan, you can get sim cards right from the vending machine at the airport. And in true convenient Japanese fashion, they have uh, prepaid SIM cards. Option number three, and option number four, is going to be Wi-Fi. So out of all of these here, just for safety reasons, I'm pretty partial to this one and this one. All right, so rental SIM cards, these are a thing. Last year at exactly this time, my little brother Jesse came to visit Japan. He was only originally planning to stay two weeks, but he loved his time, so he stayed like pretty much an entire month. He went with the SIM card option, and I don't think he was super happy about it, but let's give him a call and see. What's up, man? Yeah, I'm not, uh, not too much, you know, out here in the back. Last year, you came to Japan pretty much at exactly this time, right? Yeah, it was like December 18th last year. If you want to say hi to everybody. Hey everybody, how's it going? He kind of looks like Bradley Friesen. Like, if you don't know who Bradley Friesen is, I'll like leave a link to his YouTube channel somewhere. He's a Canadian helicopter pilot. Anyway, you went with the SIM card option. How many gigabytes? Maybe it was 4 gigs or something like that. It was 25 bucks. There was even a 10 gig one, but there were none. We couldn't find them anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even for the month. It was just for that little bit, right? And yeah. I ran through it. That was it. <laughs> was it easy for us to find the uh, the SIM card vending machine? No. No, it 
was not. Yeah, it took a little, like if we had just gotten it at the airport, it was right there at the airport and we didn't do it. See you next week, bro. Love ya. All right, love you too, man. See ya. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. The free Wi-Fi, I don't recommend it on its own, but it can be good if you're pairing it with a phone that has a SIM rental, finally, rental Wi-Fi. This little guy here was the first Wi-Fi router that I got in Japan. It was like back maybe 2010, 2011. I didn't have a smartphone yet. Who doesn't have a smartphone back in like 2011? I don't know, maybe that was normal. But at the time, I had paired this with my iPod Touch so that I could stay connected. This one was costing me maybe four or 5,000 yen a month. It was really slow at the time. And it just, the battery life on it was terrible. It was small and compact, but no. The next one, one that I got was maybe 2012 and that was this one here this one was by another company here in Japan the battery life was definitely much better the price wasn't much different but luckily by that time I was able to get about 10 gigabytes a month for that price anything outside of that 10 gigabytes would be completely throttled and get really really slow I'd say around 2015 I had completely given up on Wi-Fi routers. I got my iPhone and figured I am done with this. So about two weeks ago when this company called iVideo contacted me and asked me to check out their Wi-Fi router, I was understandably skeptical about it, but I said, yeah, send it to me. I want to check it out. Let's talk about the simplicity of it first. The entire thing comes in this little package. <clears throat> Didn't drop it. It's got a charger. It's got a cable. It's got a case and it's got the device. It is super simple. All you've got to do is turn the device on. Once the thing is turned on, you're ready to go. The connection code for it is on the back. You just punch that into your phone. But simplicity and all that aside, the big question is, is it worth it or does it suck? I can tell you that it's cheap. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but I want to take a second to look at the speed. So. When I first got this thing, the very first thing that I did is I compared it to my home Wi-Fi because my home Wi-Fi is not the best, but it works. I can be watching Netflix on my TV, uploading a video to YouTube on my one computer, and downloading software onto my other computer, and my Wi-Fi is always held up. Now, I wanted to compare it to that. I'd done a comparison the other day, but I figured why not just do a fresh comparison right here. I'm gonna put this on the screen right here. My Wi-Fi is the one that says 106F. If I go into the speed test app, doing that right now, and I go begin test. My home Wi-Fi is having a bad day. Why is this so slow? Now let's compare that to the device here. The device is the 501HW. It's actually pretty good. Okay, okay. Let me just put that aside. So the device is quick. Like, so far I have taken the device through Tokyo. I've tested this thing above ground, I've tested it in the subways, I've tested it on the 30th floors of buildings, little rural areas, pretty much everywhere. And it is quick. In fact, it is one of the quickest Wi-Fi that I've been connected to over the last two weeks and it's kind of become my main device. But what really got me about this Wi-Fi when I first took a look at it was the price because the price doesn't even compare to what you'd be paying for like long-term Wi-Fi rental contracts here in Japan. In fact, I have opened up their website just so I can show you here. It's saying that it's like $31 a month for renting this stuff right now. I've been going over this company's website for like the last two weeks just seeing if I can get a good feel for this. And I'm borderline confused at like how they're making money because right now they're saying that it's like $31. Now obviously they have a lot of sales it seems. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll leave some info for you below. Look at this, unlimited data all throughout Japan. That's one of the other things that I really like about the Wi-Fi option is because if you're traveling as a group, you got two, three, four, five people, apparently this device will connect up to like eight or nine. It'll connect to multi, I don't think you're going to have a group of more than nine people sharing one Wi-Fi router, but if you do, that that's, that's even cheaper and you can't do that if you're renting a SIM card. Okay, I found it. So here is the part that I love the absolute most about it. So there it is, they've got this lowest price guarantee. 
I contacted the company and I actually asked them directly like is it true like will you actually beat any price because there's got to be something cheaper out there and the person from the company emailed me back and was like yes we will beat any price please let everybody know that additionally we are going to be giving you your own promo code so I've got all of that linked below if you want even cheaper Wi-Fi this is so exciting guys because I'm sure it's gonna come up because I would be wondering if I was sitting in your chair right now no the company's not paying me to talk about any of this for now they're giving me the Wi-Fi and asking me just to check it out and if I like it share it with you guys if I don't like it share that with you guys their like licensing agreement actually asked me for a true honest reflection of my opinions and my opinion is that I, I like this thing I'm, I'm really excited about this. One of the videos that I released last week, I'll link it right there. Somebody had asked me on Twitter if there was any way that they could support my channel. And I, I feel like I kind of sidestepped that question because I want to be able to bring something to you guys. And I kind of feel like this is one of the things, you know, like a lot of you are coming to Japan, checking things out. Like, like I've had people message me and say, hey, I went to the Wired Hotel that you recommended. It was really amazing. That was cool. I didn't even recommend it. I just went and checked it out. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But something like this, ugh. <laughs> but something like this that can actually make your time and your travels in Japan or overseas even better. I'm really glad that they sent this to me. They sent this to me. Hmm. Alright guys, I hope that this video was useful. I haven't done something like this in quite some time and I hope that it gave you something that you can use. I, if it did, definitely leave me a thumbs up. Also, if you have any cool travel stories, any troubles that you've had, because I know the first time I came to Japan I had so much adventure and so much trouble just because I didn't have a phone or any type of connection, but that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning about the adventure and how much I love it. I've also got something cool to show you guys. Alright, so I told you guys that I finally got this new laptop, and soon after getting that, my buddy sent me these stickers and they're really neat. I said that I wanted something to cover the Dell logo, and check these out. I don't know which one to put on here. What do you think? Let's let's take a look at them. Mushroom. We have a little Mario. It is seriously so hard to choose. This might take me a while. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining this Tokyo Tuesday. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you're not already, consider subscribing. And we'll see you soon. Bye guys.